Welcome to this month's edition of The Breeze. And you know, ladies, last month we talked a little bit about fighting the forces of negativity, which kind of uh, prevail in our society. And Tina, you in particular brought up, uh, look in the mirror. What do you see? Do you like what you see? And we took a look back at some of our <laughs> youthful days, and uh, I certainly kind of like what I see then. I don't know about so much now, but what do you guys think about uh, the pictures that are up there? Well, I have to say, I was probably 21 and sassy, but now I'm in my 60s and still sassy. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Tina? Well, I was ready to go to the prom. So I was just very excited. And I look like any typical 16-year-old, I think, back in the day. You know, the um, glasses and the you had to have your hair done that day, and we all looked alike when we got to the prom. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, those were good days. And uh, how about now? Uh, you know, our viewers, uh, you know, you asked the question, look in the mirror. Do you like what you see? Is that part of your happiness? Well, I think so. I think that when I look in the mirror, I, I say, D am I taking care of myself? Mm -hmm. You know, what kinds of things am I doing? Am I involving myself in, in happy things. You know, I went to see a, um, a grief counselor after I lost my husband. And one of the things we concluded is that I need to do my happy. And so that's kind of like my preface to whatever I'm looking at or doing. Mm -hmm. Is this my happy? Am I doing happy? And if not, then what am I going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you, Marge? Well, I um, find it very important to put on makeup in the morning <laughs> and um, I look at myself sometimes and think oh my gosh have you ever changed have you ever looked old in the last 10 years especially when I see pictures but then I just take some steps to remedy that and I can go out and feel yeah I'm looking okay today okay I think we're all in agreement then if uh, you feel happy and positive about yourself and the way you look and the way you're approaching things you're smart enough to know that if you're not feeling that way to do something about it and then, uh, you know, then the question comes up, a lot of us came down to Sun City and we had, you know, left friendships and social relationships behind where we came from, which was difficult. Yeah. But we all anticipated we'd make new relationships down here. Mm -hmm. And how important do you think having a social network or friendship, let's, let's, let's just say friendship, how important is that to your level of happiness? very important to me because uh, being single and you know being out there you want to involve yourself in circles that are going to be positive for you to meet other people that may become a part of your life. Mm -hmm. um, I have friends for at different levels different purposes and I think that's important as well you mm -hmm. know having someone who can take a short trip with you or go over to Savannah and shop or something like that or someone who needs to go to a a doctor's office with you to do something or go to farmer's market. You know, you have mm -hmm. different people that I surround myself with for different You have a little electronic list that says, okay, this <laughs> no, not her. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. For different. <laughs> well, I've got this one friend. We went to farmer's market last week. And uh, he's uh, of a different persuasion. And yeah. so I knew it was going to take him a little time to get here because he's he's just who he is. So he went with me to farmer's market and he flitted around and looking at things and he bought some pasta so he went home and fixed his pasta and really enjoyed it and had to tell me about it. But it was just so funny introducing him to some of the vendors there that I knew and of course I had to make my rounds and I consider those friends too on a different level. Okay. You know? How about you Margie? How do you approach friendship here? Well, I think um, you have to realize that you can't carry your old friendships with you, mm -hmm. you know, and you may not be able to reproduce the same kind of person, uh, the person that approaches you the same, you think, oh, do I really want to tell my life story again, mm -hmm. you know, and so you sort of um, grow into the friendships. Some mm -hmm. will remain acquaintances, and some will in time become true friends. Things depends how long you're here and who you meet up with and say, that person could really reflect who I am pretty well and I think I can trust them and I think I can depend on them. Others I do things with strictly for activities. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's more of a friendly acquaintance. So mm -hmm. I think there's an array of friendships that we have at different levels that um, 
unless we really stop and have discussions about it, we really maybe don't put them in those slots. Yeah. But they're all important. But you compartmentalize as well, I'm hearing. Yes. But I think that happens afterwards, not before. So, you know, you get a new friend, you're not going to say, well, I'm going to put him or her in this, this area or this compartment of my life. I think it just happens mm -hmm. because I think that's kind of backwards to do it the other way. But you define that friendship as you go along. And you were talking about old friendships. Some of them I look back on and I go like, wow, how were they friends in the first place? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, you know, I will, I will tell you as an adult male, yeah, an adult, that uh, <laughs> one of the hardest things that an adult male has to do or tries to do is to form a very good, solid friendship with other adult males. Mm. And I think part of that, I decided, was when you're in your productive years, your most productive years, you've got a job, you've got a family, you've got stress, and sometimes you don't make the personal investment of time or energy mm -hmm. to make that friendship. But it is a definite hole in your life. And that's a situation which I think is not solvable when you're younger. But when you're older, I think a key word is now you have the time to invest. Who do you want to invest that time and energy with? And that's how you would, I think, start making the sort of friendships that you need to have to have a, a, like a complete social picture. Mm -hmm, that makes sense. Now that's a little heavy perhaps. But well, with, it, with that thinking though, are you limiting your friendships more to people within Sun City or do you have friends outside of the Sun City community? Well both, but uh, I mean, it, you know, the way I look at it is you, you look at somebody, you meet somebody, uh -huh. there's that first impression, that all important first impression. Yeah. And is this somebody that you think is going to have a similar interest or that has a sense of humor or understands my basically sarcastic nature. <laughs> uh, you I know, was wondering about that things, <laughs> <laughs> things you want to do, some uh, uh, people you want to do things with or go yeah. out to dinner. Uh, and how much of that do you want to, you know, pursue or do you want to just say, okay, that's somebody I know from karaoke club, but that's it. I don't want to go further than that or somebody that I know from chess club or whatever, mm -hmm. and you start compartmentalizing or categorizing your friendships mm -hmm. and limiting the energy that you spend. I, I think we do, and that was even in some of the, the research that we did for this. There are different levels. Mm -hmm. You're speaking of an acquaintance mm -hmm. that you might meet in karaoke, and that's really the only common denominator, and that's all you need. For the, enjoy that person in that venue. But there are different depths to relationships, and I think if you're looking for a real strong buddy, confident, that takes more time, more work, I think. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that assumes, too, you're being a conscious competent about it. You a know, what? A conscious competent. Wow. Now, in my training, you had conscious competent, unconscious competent, unconscious incompetent, and conscious incompetent. Oh my, well, what a mess, in other words. <laughs> Hot mess. <laughs> Got it. So that assumes that you really are paying attention to what you just said. In most cases, I think it just evolves naturally. Mm -hmm. And they become in that quadrant of your life. And do you ever get to the point where you've been doing things with somebody or you think this is a good friend and then you, something happens? that causes you to stop and evaluate that quality of friendship. Absolutely. That happened recently yeah. with me, with my road dog. Yeah? Yeah, she got upset with me because I can be a little forthcoming. And we were going to a concert, and because we didn't park at a certain place, I ended up missing the first part of the concert. Not the main part. So later, we determined that she needed to be more forceful in what she wanted to do. Yeah. She needed to speak up. Because so you were dominating her in a way? She allowed that oh. to happen. That's, that's the operative there. Okay. Because I'm a person who likes to make a decision within a short amount of time. And if you're going to uh, kind of suggest, and I've got you know, my idea in mind, and you haven't really presented your idea, 
that I may, she says, it's dismissive, but it's more, no, I'm not dismissing you. I'm just dismissing the idea. So if she had been a new friend, not yet what you term road dog, um, you probably wouldn't have been real excited about the idea of going somewhere again. But because you had other value in this Absolutely. friendship, you Absolutely. could tolerate it and talk about it. Absolutely. That's a good friend. Yeah, that's a good friend. And I didn't want to lose her friendship, but I had to ask her, what is it that we can do as a compromise yeah. to make this happen? So the next concert or the next whatever we're doing, if you want me to really listen to that idea, then be a little bit more forceful about it. Okay. Own it. Well, then, I think what I hear you saying is that you had a great <clears throat> quality friendship. You have, not had. But there are aspects of that person which you don't, I don't know if the word is like or admire or what the word is, but that somehow you recognize as a, we'll call it a shortcoming or a peccadillo. Oh, gee. <laughs> or, <laughs> which is? You can't even spell it. <laughs> <laughs> Something that about that person, even though your friends are really good acquaintances, that if overdone could tend to drive you crazy. <laughs> An irritant. An irritant. There you go. You got one right now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'm on your last nerve. I know that. But that's another way of saying it. I mean, you know, yeah. th there are certainly people that I consider very close friends that Notwithstanding that, you have to go into a conversation or an endeavor with them with the understanding that certain things aren't going to work. Also, I think you have an investment in that friendship, and therefore you owe it to the friendship to talk about it if it's important to you. Mm -hmm. You can choose to ignore the Peccadillo, Peccadillo? Peccadillo. You call it what you want, but I'll call it Peccadillo. <laughs> Idiosyncrasy? Whatever. Whatever. Uh, you can ignore it to a point. Um, I have an associate that I work with who has a very unique voice, and I'm being politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to her, I said, have you ever thought about doing animation? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had the perfect voice for it. And that allowed me to get into the conversation about her voice, to learn more, to see if that was something that she grew up with or if it's something that some people learn different voices as they come along. And did she react and say, now I found out something about Tina. She's somewhat intolerant of people's peccadillos. <laughs> no, she didn't say that. <laughs> but okay. But, but, but you know, basically she, she said, well, somebody else had said that to her before. Well, and then you know, her sister sounds the same way. If, in fact, you felt the uh, intensity of the friendship, the investment, to even approach that topic, that says something about the way you are as a friend, certainly. And what, She's a work friend. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Okay. And what, what, uh, what other attributes constitute a true blue friendship? <clears throat> oh, I think it's somebody that you maybe even mirrors yourself a little bit. You like the qualities in them, or sometimes maybe it's a quality that um, added to yours makes you both best. But I Ooh, think... I like that. Say I, that I think, again. Quality added <laughs> you, to you yours. Watch, watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but I think, I think there has to be trust. I think there has to be almost a, a magnetism sometimes, or we're apt to write somebody off. Mm -hmm. But I think over time, as we test out a, a friendship, we know who is really true blue and loyal, who we can really count on. Mm -hmm. or, or if this is just a friend that's just for a season, and there are friends just for seasons, rather than lifelong. Okay. And most of us have left longer life friends when we move to Sun City, mm -hmm. now we have to determine what level of friendship do I want? Do I want another best friend? Or like in my neighborhood, there are like 11 of us who own homes and we're, that are all single women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's always something to do, somebody to call. Will any of us become best friends in these next few years? I don't know, but we're friends of some type mm -hmm. without naming what it is. We're social friends. We do things for each other. We. You trust in some more than another. So uh, 
you know, the trust is certainly important. Honesty, I think, honesty. And ability. Ability. Yes. By that I mean, you know, knowing their strengths. So if you're in a situation where you need to call upon one of these people, then you know who is best suited to handle your request. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that really brings up another point. And that, that? Is, that is taken to an extreme. Now, you rely on friends for help. We all do, for yeah. support. Mm -hmm. But taken to an extreme, some people <laughs> use their friends for their own benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if you identify someone you've met that is attempting to use you but couldn't care less about how you feel or how you need support from them, then you got a problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is what Aristotle called self-interested friendship. Okay. Hmm. Where the person is wanting something from you but really doesn't give a whole lot of care for you. Mm -hmm. uh, it either advances them, it introduces them to somebody they want to be introduced to, they use you for a short time, but you're very disposable. They're not going to be there in the harsh, uh, hard times. Yeah, yeah. But isn't it up to us to kind of be smart enough to kind of sense that? Well, I, th I guess that's my point is that when you, you know, it's like my, my approach is if you want to get to know somebody, play golf with them, play poker with them. Spend some time with them in situations that require a certain demeanor, a certain ah. honesty, a certain mm. integrity. Mm -hmm. And if they don't meet the standard, well, then they're never going to meet, be one of your friends. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you meet up with somebody who you believe is trying to use you for their own selfish mm -hmm. purposes, then you got you got to dismiss them. Yeah. Well, and I think at this point in I'm our done. lives, it's like we can do that. You know, we're not a thirteen-year-old that has to have a friend. Right. You know, has to have a buddy. Right. You know, we're adults that might have grown through all that, and now we just want valuable companionship. Yeah, and uh, you know, we went out on the street and got some good answers to mm -hmm. the question of whether friendship is part of your formula for happiness. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm here with my fellow Breeze panelists, Margie and Tina, outside Perrysburg building, where we are going to attempt to talk to residents about the impact of having good friendships on their happiness and how they might define friendship. We look forward to some interesting answers. You look like a happy person. Do you uh, count good friendships among the happiness formula? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think that we're all one happy family and uh, uh, my my happiness a large part is due to other people uh, I have a dual personality uh, I like to be alone many times but I also like to be with people a gregarious person uh, but you know people can be alone even in a crowd so you have to be careful what you mean. I love friendships, I have many friendships, and I hope to continue holding those friendships, and I've developed friendships right here in Sun City. Good friendships are probably what makes me the happiest thing in the world. I would say among my friendships are my dog, which I got after my husband passed away, which has really made life different for me, and um, I have some very, very close friends and a lot of acquaintances that are that make my day very joyful. How do you define a good friendship? A friend is a person with whom I can think aloud. Who is that, Emerson? I think, anyway. And that's my best friendships are people that I can just discuss anything with. And we enjoy it. And, uh, you know, that, that sort of evolves into the next topic is, you know, what is the concept of happiness. Is it material wealth? Is it fame? Is it fortune? What it, What is happiness? And I think that uh, we can talk a good bit about that, But uh, and we will next month as well. But I guess my point is, without good friends, it seems apparent that happiness is going to remain elusive. Yes, if I may quote Aristotle. You may. <laughs> oh, boy. Here she goes. Without friends, no one would want to live, even if they had all of the other worldly goods. Pretty powerful. Actually, I read a little Aristotle on, uh, in preparation for this, and uh, one of his other credos is simply, 
Happiness consists of striving to be your own best self, which requires you first, of course, to know thyself. And as, to like thyself. Right, as the oracle at Delphi said. So, mm -hmm. you know, that shows you my Ivy League education, all of it. <laughs> and that's all we know about Aristotle. <laughs> <laughs> but in any event, you know, those concepts are, are interwoven, interwoven in a way. And uh, it's a... Uh, it's a, a very interesting topic because certainly material wealth sort of pales in comparison to a spiritual, yes. emotional wealth. Yes. What was that king that had no clothes and... and the was, emperor with The emperor, emperor. Without, mm -hmm. Kind of the clothes. same thing, you know, he had all the wealth, but no one would tell him that he, he was not wearing clothes. <laughs> <laughs> well, our friend Larry Kilkoff in his Out of My Mind segment has some additional thoughts about friendship. Larry? My colleague here on The Breeze, Margie Bruiser, has a life motto on the show's opening graphics that I really like. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better best. And I want to take that thought this month and apply it to our current topic by looking at the difference between casual friends, good friends, and truly best friends, and offer why I think those distinctions are so important. According to the BBC News, a study of 6,500 men and women in Great Britain over age 52 found that being isolated from family and friends was linked with a 26% higher risk of death. If you're a senior citizen, that should get your attention. Apparently, electing the life of a social hermit is detrimental to your physical health, regardless of what you may be feeling emotionally. I have no idea if the UK study attempted to quantify the depth of a relationship with the increased mortality rate, but I suspect it is important. It's important because not all friends are created equal. Casual friends, no matter how engaging, are normally reluctant to become too involved in our personal lives without a clear invitation. These people are great at commiserating and extending sympathy when things aren't going well for us, but that's about as deep as the relationship goes. Best friends, on the other hand, when they are truly at their best, are like air and water. They enable our survival. Best friends are fiercely loyal and supportive, but it's not all hugs and glad handing. Best friends occasionally tell us things we need to hear, but would rather not. It is both a privilege and responsibility they've earned because of the deep care and concern they have clearly demonstrated for us over time. It takes a person of extraordinary courage and self-sacrifice to risk the very relationship he or she presumably values as much as you do because they perceive you are on a self-destructive path. Even when best friends are unhappy with our choices, they are steadfastly in your corner and they are not going to let you go down without a fight. And you know it and are eternally grateful for it. At least I hope you are, not everyone is. Some people will go to great lengths to keep such intimacy out of their lives. It feels too risky. The same people then often wonder why they feel lonely or depressed. The fact is, they don't love themselves enough to let others love them for who they truly are. Not me. As an elderly single adult with absolutely no nuclear family of my own, I seek people out. And the best way to do that, it seems to me, is by simply practicing the discipline of giving of yourself when someone has a need and hope that that person is smart enough to reciprocate when you're the one that's hurting. I'm Larry Kilkoff, and normally it is my intent to make this segment a light, humorous commentary. It feels funny not trying to be funny this month. Oh well, it just so happens that friends and friendships are subjects I take pretty doggone seriously. Thanks, Larry. And now, ladies, any last words about the topic today or what we might talk about next month? Well, as far as today, I think um, if anyone is watching this, that does not have a friend, my advice and what I'm reading is uh, be a friend. You know, be what you want to be to somebody else and that is more apt to draw friends to you. 
My thing is to, to do your happy, define what that is, and friendship should be a part of your doing happy. And that's it for this month's edition. Please join us again next month when we again shoot the breeze.